35mm film. It's old school and it's analog and it's perfect for both professional and personal photography. The first time I dabbled in film photography was actually when I picked up a pack of four disposable cameras from Asda. I even have one of the cameras from the pack from all them years ago. I don't think I ever developed it because I, the other three I think were a little bit shocking. There's no flash so you've got to be in bright sunlight or like an industrial sun has to be around you but I don't know maybe I uh, maybe I should actually develop these and just see what's on them. I actually might do that. So it started as a hobby capturing little memories here and there and eventually it led me to shooting film for actual clients on an actual shoot. So what cameras do I have? <laughs> My favourite by far is the Yashica. It's just a simple point and shoot, but it takes phenomenal photos. The detail is amazing, it's easy to use, and it's quite robust. I've dropped it a few times, and there's definitely signs of wear and tear, however, it still works. Like, there's, there's no tomorrow. I did have one issue a few weeks ago, though, however. I'd taken about four photos, and it rewound all the film, and so there are just four photos chilling on here, so this is just like a waste of money. I think as well it's Portra 400, and that is not cheap at the minute. Oh, what a waste. The Yashica was a camera I bought after saving up for a few months. It was a little bit pricey, it was £400, and I had to pay £90 import tax because it came from Japan. Now I don't know how many rolls of film I've actually put through this camera, I'd probably estimate about 30 to 40, and that might not seem like a lot. And it might seem like rookie numbers, but when you're paying for each film canister and for it to be developed, the price does rock up, but in all honesty, I, I don't care, I just, I love it too much. The Olympus MJU Zoom 105 is by far the oldest point and shoot film camera I own. Because my parents bought it in the 2000s and they took it along with us throughout many adventures. So this camera has a bit of sentimental value and we've still got the photos and the photo albums in the study. I personally have only put a few rolls through this and when I say a few I literally mean a few. There's currently uh, some black and white film in there at the minute. And then there is the Canon AE-1, my SLR camera. I actually picked this up first year of uni. This was the first film camera I had actually. I bought the Yashica a few years later, but this, yeah, this was actually my first, my first film camera, crazy. I've put a few rolls through it. I won't lie, it's probably my least favourite film camera I have, and that is because I think the back, you hear that? The back's just a bit, it, it leaks a lot of light, and the quality of the photos just don't match up to what you'd expect them to be on an SLR camera. Um, maybe I just got a dodgy one on eBay because I bought it for like £25. Um, but I wasn't too impressed with the results. Maybe I just wasn't shooting it right. Who knows? I don't know. I should probably buy another one. I'm probably going to buy a, a different one. Maybe like a Pentax or something. Can you recommend some 35mm SLRs in the comments below? I'd like to hear what you might have to suggest. There's just something so satisfying about that. That was nice. Today's 
tune for our Riri. So you filled your role of film, but where do you get it developed? If you're based in the UK, I cannot recommend filmdev.co.uk enough. I have had every role from my Yashica, bar the very first role, developed by them. And I have never had an issue. The actions you need to take to get your negatives developed are simple. You need to go to the website, download the form, print it, and fill out the information needed. You have a black and white section and a colour film section. Pop your film into an envelope along with your canisters and send them off. And hope Royal Mail don't lose your letter. It usually takes about five days for them to get back to you. They send you an invoice via PayPal. Once you've paid it, a few hours later they will send you a WeTransfer link with your photos. And dare I say, that moment when the email hits your inbox is like Christmas. It's fantastic. And for a bonus round, if you want to get your photos printed out, but for free, free, you can download the app called Free Prints from the App Store. It's like a butterfly icon and you get 45 free prints every month. Put your photos onto your phone, select the images you want to print off and then pay a $3.99 delivery fee. And then you just have to wait for the postman. As a photographer, I love seeing my photos printed out either big or small. Having that physical copy of your work, whether it's professional or for fun, just makes things a little bit more better. It gives you another perspective on your photographs and can even develop your skills going forward. Again, I love taking photographs and I love 35mm film. If you want to check out some more images I've taken, you can check out my film Instagram account. If you enjoyed the video, please show me by leaving a like. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.